بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا ڈسٹنگ نرنگ ڈیئر کلاس ایز یو نو یو آر اوے ایٹ ہوم بیکاز آف دا پینڈیمک اینڈ کرونا وائرس سراؤنڈ اینڈ دیٹس وائی ٹیکنگ دس اپارچونیٹی یو آر اوے وی اسٹارٹ اٹ ڈسٹنگ نرننگ ایز ٹاک ٹو یو یسٹر ڈے سو today we are going to discuss splenic trauma it's a very important topic because spleen is very oftenly injured in um, polytrauma patient in blunt abdominal trauma rib fractures low thoracic injuries and in uh, multiple injured patient and those who have a seat belt problem uh, injuries the spleen is uh, injured in uh, uh, certain op- uh, major surgical operation as a hydrogenic injury is a very delicate organ and very easily can be damaged and the first of all we're going to talk about the uh, location and relation of the spleen into the other organ spleen is situated in the left hypochondrium in relation to the 9 10th and 11th ribs and it has attachment with the stomach pancreas tail the colonic flexure uh, splenic flexure of the colon left kidney diaphragm and it has attachments attachment with the diaphragm is called uh, phreno splenic ligament and the ligament attachment with the colon is called colo splenic ligament the attachment with the kidney is called leno renal ligament and the attachment with the uh, greater curvature of the stomach is called gastrosplenic ligament which actually contains uh, short gastric vessels they are very important while we are uh, doing spl- uh, splenectomy or gastrectomy these short gastric vessels should be very carefully ligated And then comes to the uh, hilum hilum of the spleen is Uh, where the tail of the pancreas is tail of the pancreas actually fits into the hilum of the spleen and behind the pancreas are the major splenic vessel the splenic artery and splenic vein as spleen is a vascular organ so it's very richly supplied by the uh, the sources of the supply from the splenic artery and short gastric vessels Uh, just a, a brief review of the history um, when you talk spleen was uh, in past was source of emotion was known to be a source of emotion but later on aristotle challenged this idea and argued that the spleen was even unnecessary in certain uh, races spleen used to be removed to improve the speed of athletes in 90 in Uh, mid of the 16th century the first splenectomy was performed uh, and that was for the hypersplenism the first traumatic splenectomy was performed uh, later on in the end of the 16th century Uh, the lot has been discussed lot has been um, uh, developed in the non operative and operative treatment uh, in uh, early 19th century 20th century uh, the non operative treatment of the spleen st- people start working cocker in 1911 described the high failure rate of non operative treatment in traumatic spleen in uh, 1950 to 70 high uh, post splenectomy infection opsi opportunistic post splenectomy infection rate in children following splenectomy uh, actually create an idea of non operative or the conservative or uh, spl- uh, uh, treatment of the spleen in 1990 successful non operative treatment in adult was practice what are the features are the clinical features of traumatic patient there are three type of presentation in traumatic spleen patient three types of presentation one is the patient received in shock and remained in shock couldn't survive 
uh, have already bled a lot. Number two, patient received in shock and recover at the time uh, of resuscitation and then remain stable. Number third, patient received stable, then went into shock and then need to be operated early because that patient remain in shock. The uh, a traumatic injury to the left hypochondria. What are the suspicion? Uh, when you are suspicious of the splenic injury, once you have a, a injury or blunt trauma impact on the left hypochondria, once you have a fracture rift, particularly in the left lower thorax, when you have a pneumothorax in the left side, once you have a seat belt injuries in the left hypochondria, uh, the patient having such impression is in shock, hypotension and referred pain to the left shoulder, what you call is Cahir sign. Cahir sign actually is in patient with suspected splenic trauma, you elevate the foot end of the patient for a few minutes and patient starting having pain into the left shoulder tip because of the irritation of the blood to the left, to the left hemidiaphragm. So many of these patients are received in shock. So that's why these patients must be resuscitated early and must need early blood transfusion and many of these patients need to be resuscitated in the operation room. So those patients who have been stable, they need evaluation, thorough evaluation, either they are candidate for non-operative or conservative uh, uh, treatment for the splenic ruptures. So that's why it is important to decide what are the different modalities to decide whether these patients are stable and need urgent surgery or they may be stabilized and may be observed with a conservative treatment. So modalities are diagnosed, uh, diagnostic modalities are FOS scan, DPL and CT scan. What is DPL? DPL is a invasive but standard investigation. Re uh, nowadays it is replaced by the FAST, but detect blood, bowel contents, bacteria, food particles, bile, and the accuracy is up to 98%. And actually they miss the retroperitoneal injuries and diaphragmatic injuries. Diagnostic peritoneal lavage. So thus, that's briefly about the diagnostic peritoneal lavage as, as this inframblical uh, hole is made and the cannula is inserted, catheter is passed and aspirated. If the such like is in picture, if the blood has been aspirated, then this is a positive peritoneal lavage and this patient, uh, it's confirmed that the hemoperitoneum is there a, a significant hemoperitoneum is there, it means these patients require urgent exploration. What you need to do? Diagnostic peritoneal lavage is warm ring lactate for use for the lavage. One liter is infused through this cath catheter into the peritoneal cavity and then the drip has been, uh, then the patient is shifted in different position, uh, first uh, foot, uh, foot up, then the head up, then the right side up, then the left side up and so that the blood is mixed, then you place the drip set, uh, drip bag into the, uh, at the ground level and let the, let the return come back into the bag and observe the contents. What is positive peritoneal lavage? If the red blood cells are more than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter and more than 500 WBCs per cubic millimeter, gram stain is positive for bacteria, aspiration of the gross blood, GI contents, vegetable, food particles, bile. That's this picture show. That's how you pull down, place the drip bag back down the ground level so that the return of the peritoneal contents back and see what's coming up. Gross examination is if you can see through the bag, 
you can see or you can read the newspaper across this bag or the tubing it means this is a negative peritoneal lavage if you can't grossly is a positive peritoneal lavage foscan foscan is a um, it can detect the blood at certain places it is a focus assessment of sonography and trauma this is a this is a very good addition to the trauma patient the fast scan is a focus assessment of sonography in trauma and it can detect the blood at in the peritoneal cavity and pelvic cavity and in the chest cavities the so non invasive and it is non invasive and repeatable the advantage of this investigation is it is simple ultrasound but focus at certain points it's a non invasive repeatable but it depends on the expertise of the operator so that's why almost all the surgical resident and the senior surgical resident they are trained they can do this in emergency room and these fast scans are no available and the drawbacks are the miss specific injuries there are drawbacks with obese patient and otherwise it can replace in many setting in the trauma center through the dpl what are the signs kari sahab aa jaye kari sahab aa jaye fast scan the, the focus assessment depends upon the four four sides of the probe the epigastrium probe will detect the blood in the chest and hemo uh, thorax can be detected the blood in the right uh, hypochondrium in the liver trauma and the left hypochondrium in the chest trauma and also can assess the blood in the pelvic cavity and the generalized gross hemoperitoneum another picture and replace the pelvic probes then pelvic uh, contents subhepatic pleural and perinephric another one pelvis perinephric nephric and subhepatic what are the different grades of splenic trauma so grading of the injury is important once you are planning to uh, either to operate or observe the conservative treatment that depends upon the uh, grade of the injury so grade grading is very important and how we can grade by ct scan is very important tool to grade the injuries and this only possible with the patient who are received stable or the patient who remain stable after the resuscitation and these patient can be graded otherwise those patient who are who have been in shock and could not recover properly should go to the operation room directly and the rest of the resuscitation operative management should be continued grading of the splenic trauma is important uh, and help in selection of the patient for urgent operative treatment or conservative treatment so grade 1 injury is the hematoma subcapsular hematoma less than 10% of the surface area or the laceration which is less than 1 cm deep then the hematoma grade 2 hematoma is a subcapsular hematoma subcapsular hematoma uh, 5 to 10% of the surface area or the laceration which is 1 to 3 cm deep grade 3 splenic trauma is hematoma more than 50% of the surface area of the spleen or uh, the laceration which is laceration 3 cm more than 3 cm with the with the uh, rupture of the trabecular vessels grade 4 trauma the laceration segmental or hilar laceration or major vascular injuries grade 6 so grade 5 trauma so 
this the picture representation or view of the grades of the trauma you can see the grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 grade 5 Grade five trauma cannot be managed uh, with a conservative grade four and five trauma. Grade one, two, and three can be managed by by conservative treatment or can be spleen can be preserved either with the partial splenectomy or repair of the spleen. So major question remains to operate or not to operate. 80% of the blunt splenic injury can be managed non operatively but it all depends upon the facilities of the ct scan and the vigilant team intensive care management observation so this non operative treatment is possible only where a good uh, care is available non operative management uh depend uh, will involve the serial examination clinical examination serial hemocrit assessment monitor vital signs urine output and and period of immobility of bed rest or masterly inactivity follow up with the ct scan within 42 to 24 to 48 hours is important the serial follow up ct scan is important another very important investigation in a facility if you could have uh, selective vessel angiography and embolization if this facility is available only uh, those center can afford to have grade 2 and 3 injury conservative treatment grade 3 or higher contrast blush moderate hemoperitoneum evidence of ongoing bleeding so selective vessel angiography will help you to locate the bleeding site and embolize the source of bleeding uh, bleeding vessel and the bleeding can be stopped so that can help to preserve the spleen pros and cons of embolization showed use of selective arterial embolization to improve non operative rates preservation of functional splenic tissue 20% complication rate including the failure to control the bleeding and need for repeat embolization and repeat embolization and maybe surgery afterward failure to identify concurrent injuries and splenic abscess are the complication of this investigation surgical management of splenic trauma midline incision evacuation of the blood from the and packing of the right hypochondrium medial and onward rotation of the posterior packing pinch of hilum to control the bleeding exploration of the other injuries that saw mobilization of spleen as we were talking about the attachment of the spleen different attachment with the diaphragm kidney colon and they can be uh, separated and divided uh, very carefully the gastro uh, splenic ligament should be addressed with the short gastric vessel and then ultimately need to uh, ligate the major uh, vessels at the hilum the splenic artery and splenic vein but a lot care is needed to mobilize this point because any injury to the tail of the pancreas may end up with the pancreatic fistula so delicate uh, handling here is important because the tail of the pancreas can be easily uh, damaged while doing this splenectomy so once you preserve the spleen uh, operative treatment but 
you need to preserve the spleen or a partial splenectomy or repair of the spleen is called splenorrhaphy. Linear laceration or capsular tear may be managed by suture ligation of the bleeding vessels and figure of eight cloyer and plaget buttress or the mental patch repair. It is called splenorrhaphy. Splenorrhaphy uh, in splenorrhaphy you can preserve the spleen, control the bleeding and some function of the spleen can be preserved. This is more important with the children. Splenic mesh. <coughs> Splenic mesh can be used. Useful with satellite or multiple laceration to spleen. Uh, mesh is used, useful and it can be uh, used as a bag, mesh bag. The spleen is wrapped in conventional mesh and tighten with the sutures and so that it should stay stay and it will affect as a tamponade effect and control bleeding that's how it looked like mesh control of the mesh repair of the splen splenic trauma it will help to control the bleeding and it will help to have a viable splenic tissue and some function of the spleen can be preserved. Complication rates. Look at this chart. Look at the complication rate when different studies showed. Abdominal abscess, wound infections, pancreatitis, pancreatic fistula, wound debris, hemorrhage, pneumonia, sepsis. Sepsis is more important, more important. UTI and other complication and more important is post splenectomy opportunistic infection post splenectomy opportunistic infection mean post splenectomy but there's a post pneumococcal high virulence infection is more important that's why <clears throat> to avoid such complication splenectomy is avoided in particularly in the children where, where children who have a thick capsule of the spleen and relatively hold suture better so the splenic repair can be possible in children and uh, splenectomy can be avoided this is a flow chart showing the different options in different presentation different patients how they stable patient unstable patient results of dpl result of uh, ultrasonic images, fast imaging and then other CT scan, the grading of the injury and that depends upon the treatment options or non-operative conservative treatment with masterly inactivity or you can go for laparotomy, a non-stable patient and splenectomy and those with the bleeding has been stopped or the minor lacerations, grade 1, 2, 3 injury, the splenic um, laceration can be repaired and with even the, when the splenic hilum has been preserved but the multiple uh, traumatic injury can be can be managed with the mesh mesh repair of the mesh uh, repair of the spleen conclusion the role of angiography selective angiography remains to be defined and trage tool versus a selective application is important. It's a splenectomy patient do suffer a lot of complications, but splenectomy is a life-saving procedure. Complication, the rate due to the splenectomy itself is low and role of associated injuries. Patients still die of splenic injury and stop hem control of hemorrhage is the main key in the management of the splenic trauma. Thank you very much.